Dad, why are you still using this dusty camera? <gasps> I'm going to explain to you and those watching that it's not the latest camera that does the magic. You can make yourself look good and be on YouTube using a camera that came out in 2008. So yes, folks, I'm going to be telling you why I use the Canon 5D Mark II. Yes, the Mark II in 2020. <laughs> how you doing thank you for watching the video I'm gonna be like I said on the tin I'm gonna be explaining why I still use a Canon 5d DSLR to shoot the family vlog videos in fact I use it for everything I use it for photography I use it for videography I use it to make my toast I use it to brush my hair only kidding that's an expensive hairbrush what I actually use it for as I said is to tell stories visually either moving image video stills video or for stills and i know it's out of date i know it's not a fancy mirrorless camera i know it's not a 4k black camera um, it's an old model it came out in 2008 and i got it perhaps about 2011 i got it late because i got a 7d beforehand but it does me fine in fact for the eagle-eyed amongst you you may have noticed this is not the 5D Mark II, this is actually the 7D. No, not Mark II, but the original, the first and form, the first generation Canon 7D. But of course, I'm true to my word. I can't do a video saying why I still shoot on the Canon 5D Mark II and not shoot on it, right? So no cheating, the camera you're seeing me on now and my son here, Adolo, you're watching us shot completely and I mean completely, no tricks, on a Canon 5D, a camera that is 11 years old and still going strong. But the reason why I've got the 7D in my hand is practically they're very similar um, from the outwards anyway. Inside the Canon 5D is full frame, where the 7D is crop frame. Um, so essentially, different frame of view. So this makes anything look bigger, we're on the 5D, it's more accurate in terms of the lens choices. So I have the nifty 50 on the camera right now. On the 5D, it would be the nifty 50, right? But on the 7D, it's more like close to 80 in terms of field of view. Um, I've obviously got all this sort of like, you know, cinematography stuff on it. I've got my cage where I put all my bits and bobs on and I've got my handle. I've kept it on because it's a pain to take off because I usually use this for some of my sort of cinematography stuff going out in the field. Hence why I've got the handle grip, you know, to carry it. And I've got stuff that I can stick on the cheese plate and basically the arms here, as you can see. But essentially, you don't need all this stuff. I'm just fancy smancy. You can literally do everything you need, strip all this stuff off and just have the body. And because they look pretty much the same, I'm going to be using the 7D, but I'm talking about the 5D. So, oh. Again, I've got the nifty 50 here, and some what range you got there? Is that the 85? Uh, yeah. 85 millimeter, 1.8. So this gives you your telephoto field of view. Again, on this, it would be more like maybe 100. But on the Canon 5D, which what you're seeing us on right now, it is literally what it is on the tin, 85 millimeter, 1.8. This has got me beautiful long lens photography over many, many, many years. Even though there's the more expensive 85 uh, millimeter 1.2, which literally you can cut glass with it, it's so sharp and very fancy smancy, right? Yeah. Very fancy, well, you know, if you're doing a wedding, that they'll love you if you whip that up. But for, for what I need it for, this one does a perfect job. It goes all the way to 1.8, and it gives me that nice kind of bokeh if I want that creamy background kind of look, or just be a little bit distant and get things in proportion. Because if you're shooting people, you want things in proportion. You don't want them to have no alien heads, in it? It'd be like the alien in the alien movies, with a big head on wide squash face. Now you want a telephoto lens to make everyone look nice and normal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I'll do a video another day about lens choices, but I, the, one of the reasons why I still use the 5D Mark II to do our videos, particularly our vlogs. Reason, hold this for me, sir. 
reason numero uno, reason number one, why not? Why give up a good thing when it's working, right? If it ain't broke, why fix it? The 5D has been with me again almost a decade and it has not let me down. It is sharp, it has beautiful image quality, it go, it's HD, um, 1080p, and really, if you're doing like what we're doing, like our family vlog and our videos and reviews, you don't need 4K. And if I need 4K, pull out the iPhone, innit? Pull out the iPhone, put that on, and then you get 4K, rather than go out and buy and go crazy buying an expensive camera. So the first reason why I still use the Canon 5D, even though it's 11 years old and I've had it for about eight years or so, is it just simply works. Well, there is a workaround that I have to do because it's fiddly because the 5D doesn't have clean HDMI, getting the science bit, um, clean, uh, clean video feed out of the camera. You can't get that easily on the 5D Mark II. So what I do, I have a couple of hacks that work perfectly and have never failed me yet. One of them is a thing called Camera Live, which is an app if you're using, I don't know if you can do this on PC, but I'm a Mac user, I'm in the cult of Apple. You can download it called Camera Live and literally it lets the camera feed to speak to your uh, Mac via USB cable and you put it on display video mode on your, on your Canon 5D. You know video mode where you just keep it where you're able to see what's on the back of the screen. It feeds into your computer and via the app, you have another application called Camera Twist which is a third party app that you download and you can feed via Siphon whatever's coming out of Camera Live into Camera Twist and then that goes into an, a system like that I use, OBS, which you may have heard for streaming. I use it for streaming, but what you can do in streaming mode is you can also capture it live, um, record live, or you record it live rather, in the feed. And one of the other problems that this solves is with the camera, because doing it through this way, you don't pick up any audio whatsoever. So you have to use another audio device. Again, it's not the most straightforward thing in the world, but I have the Zoom H4n, which again, I will show you, but you will not be able to hear me because it's recording me now, but that's plugged in via USB. And what happens is both the sound from the Zoom H4n and the camera are going in together via Siphon into Camera Twist, into my OBS streaming software that's recording this live as I speak. I'll put a description in the description box below, so don't worry, I'll put you straight. You won't have to have a degree in computer science to understand how to do it. But I will say, I had to be honest, it is fiddly, but it works perfect. I've not had a single problem with it yet. So oh, um, yeah, it's so a cam twist. I think I might have called it camera twist, but it's cam twist. That will set you straight. Now, the second reason why I still use the Canon 5D and also sometimes my old friend the 7D here is that I've tried to teach myself to use whatever I have. I used to be a guy who was all about getting the latest gear I had a house full of kit that by the time I tried to get around to using it, it became obsolete and it wouldn't really work. So I learned the lesson the hard way that it's not how expensive, flashy new the gear is, it's how you use it. And I thought if I learned to use whatever I had at my disposal, then I have no excuses. I remember with photography before I had flashes, I used work lights, yeah, Home Depot work lights, the ones you put up in the telescopic arms Remember them, son? And you almost got burnt a couple of times. You know the things was literally like, sorry, forgotten. But it's like literally, you had to be careful where you walk because it would be a fire hazard if they fell over and maybe set someone on fire. So I don't recommend you using them, folks, health and safety wise. But you know, you live and learn. Uh, so I used work lights to try and get lighting before I bumped up and put some money out there and got some flash. So I learned how to use whatever I had to get the job done. You need some diffusion, got some white bed sheets, all that jazz. Um, with the 5D, I really love the fact that rather than move on to the next new shiny piece of kit, I learned how to use that backwards. 
I got into the habits of watching loads of tutorials, watching videos, maybe like this one, to know exactly the strengths and minuses. How, for example, ISO, you don't really wanna go above 640 ISO, ISO in video mode because it will get grainy and look terrible. You want to make sure even though these DSLRs have a very sensitive sensor to bring as much light as possible, you still want to light the situation very well. Otherwise you get that horrible murky grainy look to your footage. You don't want that do you? So you need to light properly. Also um, even though it's great to have bokeh, you know when you get everything all blown out and looking soft, if you use that for everything you can easily miss a focus point and everything ends up looking out of focus when you didn't intend it. You were trying to be all clever and it looked flat. So learning how to focus properly, use the light. I made sure I knew everything I could, how to use the 5D, because that was a camera I had and bring out some great quality footage. So I encourage you, whatever you have, if it's a phone, it could be a camera phone. Listen, my iPhone 11 is sharper and more crisp um, um, better image quality to be frank in some ways than my 5D though they still haven't managed to get that creamy bokeh and that real filmic cinematic vibe with the perfectly sharp 4K footage on my iPhone so it's a preference thing I love even using my iPhone to do some footage but generally speaking I use that as my out and about camera but indoors you can't go wrong with the DSLR number three Third reason why I still use the Canon 5D, it's a bit of a no-brainer really, almost like the first one, is that it still works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think the idea that, of the fact that it still delivers everything that I need it to do in terms of um, basically capturing our moments on camera, uh, making us look good, giving us that nice, smoothy, silky look, well, you know what I mean? Well, sometimes you look good and other times you might look like a, like a beast. <laughs> Uh, child abuse then. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm the one who looks like the beast, he's the one who looks like the, the charming young prince. But sometimes with the 5D you do have to accept the limitations because it is a camera that is 11 years old and obviously the HDMI not having a clean feed is an issue, the workaround is a bit jiggly, but it works. I've had this for so many years, both cameras, and I haven't exhausted the the equipment inside I've never had them put in the repair shop they've never conked out on me I haven't run out of shutter counts on my camera it still works perfectly I still get the good image quality it's not died on me the good thing about the DSLRs is that they're built like a tank if you I've dropped my camera I was out in a shoot once at a wedding in Nigeria and I dropped my Canon from quite a great distance onto concrete and it didn't break so they're pretty robust I wouldn't want to do that with my iPhone and I wouldn't want to do it with like a red camera or a mirrorless something light and fancy. Wow, that would be a nightmare. You know in Nigeria, you know, at a wedding, you have a lot of people bustling and you're trying to go for the shot and whoop, it gets, you get knocked over and it flies out your hand. Boom, 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 boom. Fortunately, very rarely a scratch. A little bit of scuff on the black paintwork, but other than that, it worked a complete charm. So one of the reasons the 5D and the 7D, they work, it works. It's very robust, it hasn't given up the ghost yet, and I, because it's so old, I guess I don't feel insecure if I go out and something happens, whereas if it was a brand spanking new mirrorless, I would feel very paranoid about anything happening to it because I'd be like, I pretty much, you know, remortgage my house to buy the camera. Exactly, you'd stay indoors with security guards Maybe I'd pay you to just watch it. Watch it with, um, you know, like a hawk. Not, 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 even, not even let the air touch it. The fourth reason why I'm 5D Mark II, I think I mentioned it a bit earlier, it is the image quality. I don't know, again, as much as I love the sharpness of 4K, particularly in more um, advanced modern cameras and even in my in my iPhone to be frank there's something about that sort of creamy filmic look of the DSLR when the 5D first came out there was a whole ton of short films and even feature films using this beloved camera it became a cult phenomenon the DSLR filmmaker craze guys like Philip Bloom teaching us how to 
the Spielbergs with a camera that you could basically buy for under a thousand pounds or well actually more like just under two thousand pounds two thousand dollars it was an absolute bargain and a steal and I think for sentimental reasons I just love the look on the Canon even doing our vlogs and our our in-house stuff like this video just used to it call me sentimental but you get a certain look isn't it there's a certain look with each camera has its own look its own style and I think the Canon look has a very dis is very distinct and very aesthetically pleasing all get me fancy words that aesthetic it looks good at the end of the day so that's one of the reasons why I'm sticking with the DSLRs particularly the Canon 5D Mark II Last reason, the, the, the fifth and final reason why I still use the Canon 5D Mark II and occasionally its little sister, the 7D Mark I, that I do not have to learn how to use another camera. It sounds lazy, but you know you've got Nikon people and you've got Canon people and then you've got the weird people who are like Sony people. And I don't want to start a tribal war as far as cameras go, right? Mm. But there's something about the camera that you're used to using that it feels like a third hand, isn't it? It's so, it's so straightforward in your hand. And listen, when you're doing any kind of video production, you don't want to be flipping up the manual to look and see, what is this? How does this work? Button? Oh, help! The noise button is ah! You don't want to be learning the ropes on a system. You want to be so familiar with it, it's second nature. You know exactly what you're doing, so you don't have to have a malfunction. It doesn't feel like you're having to phone a friend to sort out your camera issues. You know, there's something about having that experience. Like, um, one of the things that makes me a bit reticent to move into, say, another form of camera, and maybe like Sony do some amazing cameras now, is the fact that it's an ecosystem. Like before I mentioned, a bit like how Apple keeps you into its um, system with an iPhone, then an iMac, a MacBook, etc. And they all speak and sing to each other. There's something about the fact that, you know, um, the camera body you use, you have the interchangeable lenses. Again, I'm used to Canon glass. The whole ecosystem is consistent, interchangeable. I can use the same lenses on my 5D Mark II that I do on my 7D generation one and vice versa the frame will look different but generally speaking I think you can you just adapt as you need to and I don't have to invest a whole lot of money on a whole set separate set of kit with a whole separate set of adapters of um, ND filters yada 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 you get the point um, so that is the five reasons why I still use oh, help me out there. Oh, heavy oh, there of why I still use the Canon 5D Mark II and occasionally its little sister, the 7D Generation 1. I hope you found it informative. Listen, if you've got any questions about how I use it, I use additional software, things like Magic Lantern. I've been using that for years. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I can tell you any little cheats and hacks that I've used to literally stream. I was doing streaming a lot over the summer due to lockdown and I was doing it on the 5D straight into my OBS um, software. So if you've got any queries, you're a little bit stuck, put the questions and comments below in the comment section and I'll see if I can help you out. I'll set you straight, I'll get you sorted, you can count on me. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Listen, if you found this helpful, let us know because we like to pass on information. I've been doing videography for a number of years, especially DSLR. So I'd love to help you if you're a bit stuck any way I can. Maybe let you pass on some of my wisdom, my hacks, my tips and tricks in the comments section below. Let's get a conversation. Particularly, I had to hunt high and low how to get my 5D, which is an old camera, to stream on OBS live but I found a way thanks to some videos on YouTube and I'd love to be that guy to help you find your way if that's what you want to do. In the meantime, we're the Aris Sullers. This is Adolo. I'm Anthony. We are a family band. You can see our vlogs, our reviews, our reactions on the channel, but only if you subscribe below and be part of the tribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon. Say goodbye.
See you later. Thanks for watching. It's the Aris Asulas. We've had a lot of fun making the program. We had a lot of fun doing this channel. If you like what you see, you know what? Be part of our extended family, our tribe, so to speak. Be in the bell, and we'll see you real soon. Take care, guys.